Welcome back to The Curbsiders. I'm Dr. Matthew Frank Watto, here with my great friend and America's primary care physician, Dr. Paul Nelson Williams. Hey, Paul, are you excited to talk about uh, dental complaints in primary care? I This was a topic that terrified me for my entire career, I think, and now I actually kind of like the topic since I feel so much more comfortable with it. This was a great episode. Yes, and a great guest, Dr. Lisa Simon, who was a dentist then became an internist, so she's fully trained in both, uh, now practicing as an internist, but still uh, the perfect person to teach us about this. And Paul, I want to start off with just some general tips uh, for for oral hygiene. So Paul, obviously people know brushing and flossing is an important thing, hopefully more than once a day. But Paul, what about mouthwash? Is that an important thing <laughs> for... <laughs> Yeah, I wish, because as I just disclosed in the episode, I love mouthwash. I just feel like it's so deeply satisfying to use. It tastes delightful. But unfortunately, it seems like it's, uh, Dr. Simon used this as more self-care. Like, it, yes, make sure that you're flossing and brushing. Those are the important things that mechanically are removed stuff from the teeth. Maybe mouthwash does that a little bit, but probably not that much. So if you like it, go with God, but it is not a mandatory part of your your, your dental care. Right. She said maybe sometimes there's some really high fluoride mouthwashes that are like dentist prescribed, but your your typical mouthwash is is not essential. If you were to pick, you know, between brushing, flossing, and mouthwash, you know, that's that mouthwash probably the least important of the three. Now, I asked her about like kind of the timing of toothbrushing, Paul, and because because I, I had read some people were saying you should brush before or after coffee, and I I was kind of reading conflicting things, and she said, well. As long as people are brushing, she's happy, and people, <laughs> anyone interested in, yep. in their oral care, she's happy. So she doesn't really get that like into the mm-hmm. weeds of what the person's doing to themselves. But there was one time, Paul, where she said you could worry about you know uh, what you're drinking with some of your oral care. So what what about these whitening strips, Paul? Yeah, so this this was fascinating, and I it's so if you're going to be doing any kind of whitening, you're thinking about like the, just the over the counter stuff is perfectly fine to use. It seems to be as effective as the stuff that they have. But she made the point that you can actually, it makes the teeth briefly more porous. So if you use them and then drink something like, say, red wine or coffee, you can paradoxically actually increase the risk for staining. So you can actually potentially make things worse with them. So if you're going to use them, just sort of use with caution, separate out your use from your drinking the stuff that might typically stain your teeth, which I had no idea, Matt. I don't know about you. Yeah. Okay. So the other part we wanted to talk, cover in this video is this uh, acute dental pain, because this comes up commonly as well. So Paul, you know, the person that's having a little sensitivity uh, when they're eating something hot or cold, not as concerning as what about the person that wakes up and they're in constant pain? What what do we have to do for that kind of dental pain? Yeah, that, it's just, this, this is the point of the episode for me is the person who has constant dental pain, the person who kind of wakes up with it and goes to bed with it that is not triggered by specific things. That person probably ultimately needs a dental extraction or a root canal. So we spend a lot of time talking about ways to at least temporize their pain, which is really the best that we could hope for for the most immediate pain relief if you are if you are game for doing this dentists will often use a 25 or 27 gauge needle and they'll inject two percent lidocaine into where you can imagine the root of the tooth would be because that is really gonna give them the most relief because the infection has basically passed through the layers of the tooth into the pulp and she said the bacteria are just having this delicious feast of all that material in there and, uh, you know, and unless you have a root canal root extraction, you know, you can't completely cure the problem. So the local injection of 2% lidocaine is something she, she recommended if you're willing to do it. Um, and then just your typical acetaminophen, three to four grams a day, ibuprofen, 800 milligrams, three times a day. And then what about antibiotics, Paul? Yeah, it's, it's, she made the point. So it- Not recommended by most dental societies, but those are societies who are talking to dentists. So this is not addressed the patient who's presenting to your primary care office. So it presupposes they're already seeing a dentist at the time. So I'm not sure they apply necessarily. So Dr. Simon tells us that, you know, you can still tamp down. You're not going to get source control unless you take the tooth out or you do the the root canal. But you can at least sort of calm down the infection, which in turn reduces the inflammation, which in turn reduces the pain. And these are not, um, these polymicrobial infections are not going to have antibiotic resistance. Like you can use things like pen VK though it's, you know, it's multiple daily dosing and, and good luck finding it, or even amoxicillin. Like you don't have to go something like clindamycin or amoxiclab even. Like you can go fairly basic and still cover most of the, the floor mm-hmm. there and cause the problem. And you might buy those patients, uh, I think said like a couple of weeks at least of sort of pain relief before they have to see a dentist. Yeah. And and the clindamycin is just a, is a second line, but you're right. It does, it shouldn't be used as a first line for this. So 
you know, there we did we covered so much that we're actually going to do another video with more dental pearls, um, and that of course still won't be able to cover everything. So if you're interested in hearing the full episode, then click on the link in the transcript below. And with that, uh, I've been Dr. Matthew Frank Watto, and this has been another episode of the Curbsiders, bringing you a little knowledge food for your brain hole. Paul, tooth stuff. <laughs> you want to sign off? Yeah, sure. And I've been Dr. Paul Nelson-Williams. Thanks, everybody.